Ducks, it's Simon here. Welcome back to the Hermit's Cave. Um, I hope everybody's doing okay. I'm excited today because I'm going to be finally, and I haven't opened this yet since Christmas Day from since I got it, and I've been itching to, but just been trying to find the time to sit down, relax with a cuppa, and have a look at this beautiful deck together. So this was on my uh, my wish list. I've got an independent, uh, I say an independent, I have, we all have like our Amazon wish list, but I have one as well that has um, independent decks on there as well for if ever I get a little bit of spare cash and I want to treat myself then I'll pick something off that list. Um, and this was quite high up on my uh, wish list and Sandra, my friend Sandra from The Whispering Well, uh, bought me this for Christmas. So if you're watching this, thank you Sandra because um, well, I know you know how much I love Robert M. Place decks. And in recent years, I think probably the last couple of years, he's started to, because he has his own publishing company called Hermes, uh, Hermes Publications, started to produce these superb quality decks in this kind of fabric, um, and I'll, I will break the seal on this in a minute, um, these fabric um, hardcover cases, with the most exquisite cardstock. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, and he's also, you know, a, a, a creator who um, has his works published um, mass market as well through thing, people like Schiffer Red Feather. I know they're going to be re-releasing re the Buddha Tarot, for example, this year, which I'm really excited about because I did get the Buddha Tarot, but it didn't, it wasn't the version that came with the book. And I think it's pretty, pretty critical with that deck. I was fortunate enough to get the Vampire Tarot before it went out of print. And I've got most of his decks. My favorite deck of his is the Tarot of the Sevenfold Mystery. And again, this was produced in this fabric uh, hard box with the beautiful, um, beautiful gilding and cardstock is beautiful it just uh there's just nothing like it i love it and what i love about his work you know you, you, his work is uh instantly recognizable because you do get um, it, other than the art style you get these very sharp clean crisp images and the most gorgeous use of color um so i have the um first edition of this um but i had to get it when it came out on this beautiful um new version similarly i think this was the first one he did that was um in this style which is the tower uh, tower of the alchemical magnum opus and then he for the fifth edition he also brought out the alchemical tarot in this version as well and um, and they're just as i said absolutely exquisite so when I heard that he was bringing out the Alchemical Tarot of Marseille, I was very excited. Um, I haven't been to London for three years. To think I used to go two or three times a year. Um, the job that I'm in now doesn't really warrant me to go to London like my former uh, work did. So I don't get to just nip into Watkins and, and pick things up. So it does become a little bit more difficult. Although I think they do do mail order, but anyway. This is the first one I've seen in this beautiful uh, red fabric finish, and it's just gorgeous. Now, I haven't seen many walkthroughs of this at all, um, but I have heard people, um, I'm not gonna say complain, but there's, there are people who have been talking about the fact that it's not a, it's not a Marseille because the arrangement and pattern of the miners, and there is some scenic representation in the miners as well. Um, and even, you know, some of the, the majors aren't in the style of Marseille. That said, um, I would say that it's, how best to describe it, perhaps Marseille-esque. You know, it's it's Robert's version of uh, of Marseille. And, and, and I'm absolutely, 
I'm absolutely fine with that. So looking at the box on the front, it says an interpretation of the French tarot that references alchemy and hermetic texts. And, you know, I, I mentioned this when I did the walkthrough of the alchemical tarot. I'm not somebody who, um, you know, studies alchemy, knows very much about alchemy, but that doesn't that doesn't hold me back and I don't think it should hold anybody else back as well because um, it's a tarot deck and if you can read tarot then you can read these decks. If you are studying alchemy then then great. Um, there are text on some of the cards, I think it's just the majors um, and that is taken from um, hermetism or uh, hermetic text as it says here. Again that's not something, it's not a philosophical system that I follow or I'm that familiar with. I know it, you know, Hermetic text purports to be uh, from the teachings of Hermes, but it's not anything I've particularly studied. But text is text, words are words, and I'm sure it'll be um, quite delightful to have them on the cards and to be able to um, have them enhance the reading in some way or, or not, you know. Um, on the back, we've got our full card here, and it says a deck and book set. Hermes publications and this I mean these just slide out they, they are beautiful the quality is is fantastic and you know I, I think I'll mention here because I'm not going to get on a soapbox or anything but people have um, often commented again um, not necessarily on my videos but I've heard discussions and things in the community where people go on and uh, mention, you know, why do um, reviewers or people who do unboxing videos, why do they go on about the card stock? Um, you know, surely it's about how the cards read. And yes, it is. Ultimately, of course, it's about how the cards read. But for me, and I don't think I'm alone in this, really, tarot is a tactile experience. Um, you know, otherwise, I think tarot apps would be a lot more popular than what they are if that wasn't the case. To hold a deck of cards in your hand, to smell the cards, to feel the cards, particularly when they are beautiful um, like this. Jeez, these are really huge as well. <laughs> I think these are bigger than the um, sevenfold and L alchemical tarot they're certainly wider they're, they're quite a nice size um but you know when to get beautiful gilding to get lovely cardstock it's a tactile the, the feel the sound the sight the smells it's it's such a sensory experience so for me cardstock is important and i will always mention what i think about about the cardstock looking at the size i mean i wasn't expecting them to be this big really um that is the size against a standard tarot size us game size card so it's taller and quite a bit wider so these these are nice and large that was quite a, a nice surprise i wasn't expecting expecting that before we look at the cards, and it's a thick deck as well, this is beautiful. We've got this little white book, which always makes me smile when I see a little book like this from Robert M. Place, because his books um, that you can buy separately are, are intense. Um, they are huge as well, but they're, they are well written. But I, I remember one summer day taking um, one of Robert M. Place's books to the park and pulling out a blanket and laying on the ground and th there was a lot to digest. It's not an easy read, but it's full jam-packed of, of information and his knowledge is fantastic. So it says, The Alchemical Tarot of Marseille, an interpretation of the French Tarot, just like it says on the front of the, uh, the box. Um, 2021 that came out earlier this year. I want to say about March, April time, I seem to seem to think. Um, ah, so this is from the John Noble. So I wonder if um, 
he is kind of basing, using the Jean Noble as his kind of base um, of which to reimagine the Marseille um, to his style. So we have some information here on the introduction, the Tower of Marseille is not the same, sorry, the Tarot of Marseille is not the name of an individual deck of cards. The name refers to a style of tarot that originated in France, so absolutely. So you have all the different, you know, Nicolas Convert, Jean Dodal, Jean Noble um, versions, and then there's type one, type two, and it, it can become a bit of, uh, it can become quite complicated. But Marseille, you know, is a, is a, um, often people refer to it as a system, so which system of tarot do you follow? Do you follow RWS, Marseille, or Thoth? Uh, but really, when we're talking about Marseille, it's about the origin of, like it says here, of France, but also the kind of colours that are used and the arrangement of, of the pips. I think it's Kelly at The Truth and Story who used to say, I'm sure she still does, um, how, did, how did she word it? Something along the lines of, uh, all Marseille decks are pips, but not all pip decks are Marseille. And that's that's the distinction there. You know, if you are getting unscenic minors and you just have the elements represented as symbols like wands, swords, uh, coins and cups, um, you know, they, they are pip decks. So there's quite a lot of information here that you get in the intro, which is quite uh, quite nice to see in, in a small book like this. Um, so we're getting 19 pages. Then we go into the trump card, starting with the fall and going all the way through. Justice is eight, so that is following a Marseille system with strength at 11. Um, not leaving much room for minors. Uh, so the minor suits, you just get a sentence or two there. And that's it for the book. So 46, 47, 48 pages. This is the book that I was referring to that I have. The Tarot, Magic, Alchemy, Hermeticism and Neoplatonism. Second, or Neoplatonism, however you want to say it. Second edition. So nice little book, which will get you started. So let's have a look at the cards. I'm just going to bring the, the camera down. I will do my usual flip through and then I'll come back at the end and talk about uh, the cards.
So there you have it. Um, beautiful deck. Some of the cards were stuck together. I'm just checking for any sort of damage. Sometimes when the cards are stuck together, the gilding, a couple of little bits there, nothing major. So I'm happy with that. Um, the backs, I would prefer a different back. I mean, for a deck that is calling itself a Marseille, I'd much rather see um, something like this, you know, um, a more traditional type Marseille back. I'm not a huge fan of words on, on the backs of cards, but that's just, that's just me. And I know that Hermes is important to Robert and this is the name of his publishing company, etc. Um, and that's my only gripe because this is such a beautiful deck. Um, it's it's full of symbols. We've got the um, elemental symbols. We've got astrological symptoms, symbols, alchemical symbols, as you can see here. Um, we get the title, but it's the beautiful, clear and crisp images that I just really appreciate. I love the sepia off-white um, background to these cards as well. It really makes the colours uh, seem to stand out even even more. I'm not off put by um, the text. In fact, as I was looking through and doing a flip through, you don't get to spend too long to to really study uh, what's there. But I, from what I did see, the choice of text was perfect for the card. So here it says, once on a time when I had begun to think about things that are and my thoughts had soared high aloft, which is perfect for our our full card. Um, oh, it's just it's just really beautiful, really beautiful. And because these cards as well are so so large, we see so much of the image, and because of the clarity. Ah, so here for La Papesse, the High Priestess, it says, Who is it that has confined the sea within its bounds? And then the Empress is saying, Who, who is it that has fixed the earth firm in its seat? I love it. Uh, this deck is going to get so much use. The text about choice for our lover's card. We have the power to choose, for it is our power to choose the better and likewise to choose the worst. Beautiful. Really beautiful. I'm not going to spend too long because, you know, we've just done a full flip through, but... I love this. Anger, if it has formed a habit of will in accord to the thoughts of the soul, becomes courage. Death card is pretty, pretty cool. And again, referring to the uh, alchemical reference of dissolution. I love this devil card. He who has attached himself to demons becomes like a demon. That's true. These corners are... The only problem is, yeah, I think that's where those are stuck as well. I don't know if you can see, but each of the top right-hand corner is raised up. I hope that won't be a problem. I can't see it being a problem. So beautiful. They feel lovely together as well. So then we have our minors and you'll see the ace has the symbol for the elements So this one being earth, of course, um, but just gorgeous. And I love how this green goes lighter here. I'm almost giving it like a 3D effect. Very traditional, you know, we've got the, um, the publisher 
and the year. So this is, even though it said 2021, this was obviously uh, designed in 2020. And again, um, nods to the RWS. Um, not consistently through the deck, but every so often you get a little uh, reference to, to RWS. So for example, Eight of Coins, my card of the day is the Eight of Coins. And do you see the reference is there? And noticed it more so in the swords as well and in some of the cups which we will we which we'll come on to um i know there are people who don't like the sort of mix between pip and illustration but i i do i quite like it it's beautiful the three three of cups the three kind of maidens now this is interesting because this um, appears in, it'll probably take me forever to find it now, um, but you see the size difference here, look, between the alchemical tarot. Um, let me see if I can quickly jump to it. I probably won't be able to. Okay. So I found them. So in both the alchemical and the sevenfold, uh, we get this elephant for the four of cups and this heavy elephant just resting on the top of these beautiful vases or cups. And we've got it again here. I'm not quite quite sure why. I don't even know if a little white book will tell us uh, the reasoning behind it or how much you do get. Uh, an elephant stands on two cups. He is stuck. A conservative position, not moving or stuck. So he's stuck. That's interesting. So the little little white book, even though there's not a vast amount of uh, information in there, is kind of depicting, um, you know, what's going on in the in the scenic elements of the of the card this this kind of made me smile as well uh the valet which is the page of cups because normally we see a fish but there's certainly something under this but it's being covered up and all of the courts have the uh, elemental symbol uh, of which they belong and thus it came to pass that we men see as through a dark mist, the things of heaven. Oh, this is beautiful. Very RWS for a Marseille style deck. Again, six of swords. There's that transition, that boat. We do see somebody on the boat, but it's interesting. We've got this, uh, this representation here, deity perhaps blowing the sails. Hello, Mr. Bird. This is interesting. Not quite sure what creature this is. I wonder if it says in the book. So we've got the Eight of Swords, which for me, thinking of uh, RWS, and perhaps I shouldn't, but you know, that sort of illusion of being trapped. Um, cups, deniers. Uh, Eight. Eight swords form a cage that holds back a beast, trapped, blocked, or repressed. So it's a beast. I really like that the little book is describing the images and then giving you those keywords, trapped, repressed. Very nine of swords. Again, a little hint or nod, particularly with the 10 look uh, to the RWS. And then our final suit uh, is the ones. I love this. Everything that is moved is moved by soul. Just gorgeous. Love the colours. The three of... Uh, yes, and the boat, of course. You know, the when we think of the three of swords from the RWS, it's about waiting for your ship to come in. And some people say, you know, as the, as the boat already left, 
Is it coming in? Is it going? The laurel for the six. I love that we get the fiery phoenix in the one suit. Just gorgeous. Absolutely love it. Um, <laughs> Sevenfold is my favourite RMP deck, but this, I've just got a feeling I'm going to really enjoy working with this. Everything about it is just, it's just wonderful. All right. Thank you for watching. Let me know your thoughts. Is it a deck that, um, that you've got? Are you enjoying working with it? Um, I don't really want to go down the, you know, this isn't a proper Marseille. I think, I think that I've covered that, you know, this is one person's uh, retelling of the art of the Marseille or reimagining of the art uh, Marseille and lots of people have done that you know you have to look at something like Taradezo arcs to see that people can interpret um, the the tarot in in the ways that they wish to but I'd be interested in your thoughts about the deck thank you for watching everybody and until next time go in peace namaste and blessed be Thank you.